This will be a tutorial on how to set up basic spice in KiCad. We'll go over some of the basics in the GUI, making a simple schematic, and also making sure everything's set up uh, so that you can move forward with the rest of the semester. To get started, I've just opened up KiCad right now, and I'll go over some of the GUI. We'll start a new project, and that will include uh, schematic layout, parts libraries, component selection, PCB, uh, a whole bunch of different things in one project. For a simulation, we're going to be using the NG Spice uh, library and the engine so that uh, we can use kind of some open source projects that work across a lot of platforms uh, and it makes it easy for us to manipulate things back and forth. We can then pull vendor files in and vendor components and use uh, some of the syntax from the P Spice, which is a popular form of Spice, uh, and it's easy to find components in that in that format. So to first change that, before I start my project, I'm going to exit out of KiCad. I'm going to open up my C users and then my folder here, and I'm just going to right click and create a new text document. This text document is going to be dot Spice in it. So that initializes what library I'm using. I'll double click that and since I'm in Windows, it'll open up Notepad. And I just have a one line really here and that's setting my uh, NG to read P Spice. Uh, and then that way we can kind of use all the same language moving forward. Okay, so this is just a comment. And when I reopen KiCad, it'll now look for this Spice initialization file and move forward. So don't forget to save that. And then I'm going to open up KiCad. And here I can create a new project. Okay, so make sure you know where you're saving all your projects. In this case, I'll create a new folder just for this particular example. And We'll call this land one. All right, as soon as you've created that, you see you have a project. All of your icons are now available, and we're going to edit the schematic file here. So double click that schematic. It's asking you which library you'd like. We'll just use the default global library right now. If you wanted to import or you found a library online, this could be a starting place. You can always do that within the schematic editor as well. In KiCad, we have a drawing template here. I have added the grid, and if you're working in inches or millimeters, it's always good. You can scroll in and out with the mouse and use the grid to place your, your elements here. Now that you're kind of ready and set up, we're gonna start finding all of these components. Under the place, we just wanna find a symbol. And it's asking us where we want to put that symbol, so we'll click in space. It should load the libraries the first time, so we'll allow it to load every single library. And then we're just going to scroll and look for the uh, P Spice library. And then that way we'll be consistent with a lot of other vendor components that we pull in down the road. We're going to use two capacitors, two resistors, a voltage source, and ground. So it's a pretty simple uh, starting project. So let's add that voltage source in here by clicking OK and then placing that on the screen. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see my components. I can click again and it's going to pull up my symbol library and anything I use in this schematic, it's dropped into this recently used. I'll scroll back down and look for that P Spice library, which should be open. I know I need two resistors, so I'll hit OK. If you want to rotate while you're moving, you can always right click, hit orientation, and rotate, or press the R key. So I'm going to rotate this, and we're going to place one more. I can just click the R, hit OK, click R on my keyboard, and I'm going to move that out a little bit to space my icons. I need my two capacitors, so I'll drop those in as well. And okay. 
and I'll place those kind of in the same spot as that voltage source. I'll click the capacitor again, and I'll try to produce relatively equal spacing for now. And the last step to add in here is going to be our ground. So I'll scroll back down and then make sure that you find the ground, which in this case is zero volts. Hit OK. And I'm going to place a few of them all at hopefully the same spot. And now I can connect my circuit up. In order to connect things, we're going to use wires. So again, we can go place and go to wire. We can literally click on those nodes and then just make sure you connect node to node so you complete that full connection. It should kind of automate if your parts are off, so it makes that right angle for you. And I'm going to zoom the selection so it's a little easier. And I'll go back to the wire or Shift W. If I want to create a bus here, it should automatically place that on here because I've clicked on the line. I still need to add some labels in here and some text and also adjust all the component values. So when we measure this, we're going to measure that from this node here. And then we're also going to measure from this node here. So I'll place a global label. And this global label on this side is going to be an input. So that label I can call in. And I'll place that here. I'm going to place a global label on this side. And on this side, it's going to be an output, and I'll call that out. Now I can connect those with wires. So now they're part of my whole net here. Make sure you find those nodes so that they complete the circuits. Now we can come through and put in all the values for our components. I'll start off with the simple ones and we'll adjust here. If you double click that field, this needs to be a label. You can't have R question mark. So make sure you have resistor one, we'll hit okay. That resistance value needs to be entered. And to enter that, you can right click, hit properties, edit the value. And then change that to whatever value. In this case, it's 10K. Same thing here. You can double click, and this one is a 1K. So that's two ways to enter those values. This will be C1, R2. This is a 1 microfarad. C2, and this one is a 100 nanofarad. All right, now we need to move on to the voltage source. This is a little trickier. This is the only voltage source, so we can call that V1. And that way, now we have a list of all of our components as we're working through our project. The voltage source itself, we can actually set up how we're going to use this voltage source. So we want this to actually be an AC voltage source. So by putting uh, DC0 AC1, that's telling it it's a, an AC source. So I'll hit OK. And the last piece is we can actually set up the parameters for that AC sweep uh, voltage just by entering them into a text box. You can hit placed graphic text and it's nice to kind of place under or above your, your schematic and the text for us for ng spice just to get used to it 
We're saying it's a dot AC, so that's AC sweep. And we're going to use a decade counter with steps of 10. We'll range from 1 hertz to 100 kilohertz. And then hit OK. Place that object, and now that is read into our simulator. We should be ready to simulate this particular schematic. So I'll move through, go to my tools, and click Simulator. I shouldn't have to really do anything at this point. Let's just hit Run Stop Simulation and see what happens. No errors, so that's a good sign. If something went wrong, it would tell you in this window right here on the bottom left. Let's add a signal. And let's add our voltage out and see what happens. And here we go. We now have our uh, magnitude and phase of our sweep. So we can scroll this over, get a nicer view here, bring this down, and we can see we've got a really nice graph here. You're welcome to adjust. You can zoom in, fit on screen, make sure all your labels fit. And this is a good test to make sure that everything is working. Okay, That should solve the first portion of your KiCad and GSpice uh, introduction. If you want to change something in here, you can exit out of your simulator. And what I would do is do File, Save, and then do File, Save As, and create a secondary file so that you have both the schematics uh, separated. So in the V2, all I need to do is change this value to a pulse value. So we're going to emulate like uh, turning on and off at a certain rate. Okay, so this will be pulse from 0 to 5 volts, and that will be changed on the actual voltage and then we'll change it per, uh, in this case, like microsecond. Okay, so uh, the width and repetition are one second, and then we can't go much past 100 microseconds. So uh, we should hopefully see this nice curve that's produced. So in our pulse, we'll say uh, zero to five volts. And then Add in the rest of our parameters. It looks right. And then for our text on the bottom here, we can change that, and that will be a DC transient voltage, one uh, microsecond to 100. We'll hit OK. And now let's go back to our tools and simulator. And we can hit Run Simulation. And if you look now, we've got uh, some reference values that have populated our net list here. And let's add a signal. So we're looking for that V out right now. And we'll hit OK. And if you look, we got a really nice curve over that transient voltage that's being pulsed. That's what we're looking for for this example, just to test out MG Spice, get used to it a little bit, and see how it works. All right, don't forget to save all your files. And if you need to pull these graphs, you can take a screenshot. You can actually save the data as a CSV. You can save the image and save this entire book here. Okay, feel free to play with some of the other settings in here. You can always add another signal or probe signals right in the schematic. Okay. Hopefully, if you have any questions, reach out. Let me know how everything's working. And if something doesn't make sense, this is a pretty big tool, but it'll help us sort of play with some of this stuff in an online environment. All right. Good luck. Have fun and reach out if you need anything.